And Chairman Palmer, Ranking Member Demings, and distinguished members of the committee and subcommittee, thank you for holding today's hearings on unfunded mandates. I'd also like to say hello to Kentucky Representative Comer, and if he's able to join us later, my Congressman Massey, Thomas Massey. My name is Gary Moore, and I am the elected county judge executive in Boone County, Kentucky, and I'm honored to provide testimony today on behalf of the National Association of Counties to share how we can strengthen the intergovernmental consult consultation process. This issue is so important to counties nationwide as we work to balance our budgets and provide critical services to our constituents, including public safety, health services, fire and rescue, infrastructure development, and much more. As this committee examines the impacts of unfunded mandates, I'd briefly like to share a few points for your consideration. First, the regulatory consultation process between federal agencies and state and local governments needs to be strengthened. In 1995, Unfunded Mandates Reform Act, UMRA, was instrumental in reducing unfunded mandates in federal legislation for state and local governments. In fact, CBO periodically and proactively brings together NACO and other state and local organizations to discuss proposed legislation that could result in unfunded mandates. However, the framework it established for the regulatory consultation process has been less effective. It tasks each agency with developing their own internal process, which we found to be inconsistent across and within agencies. We often find that the agencies just want to check a box instead of having meaningful discussions with us as intergovernmental partners before and throughout the rulemaking cycle. We are encouraged that Congress has been working on legislation to strengthen this process and hopefully curb the number of unfunded mandates. For example, H.R. 50, you meet up, would increase transparency about the cost of unfunded ma federal mandates to state and local governments. Similarly, H.R. 1009, the OIRA Insight Reform and Accountability Act, would increase levels of consultation and collaboration between agencies and state and local governments. Time and time again, we see major federal regulations like Waters of the U.S., the ozone rule, and the Department of Labor's overtime rule finalized with little or no consultation with state and local governments, even though these regulations have major practical and financial implications for counties. Second, counties face mounting fiscal stress from unfunded mandates. Counties must operate balanced budgets. We often do not have the flexibility in our budgets to pay for new federal requirements. In fact, 45 states already impose limitation on counties' ability to raise additional revenue. In my home state of Kentucky, the burden and ever-growing list of federal and state mandates has resulted in reduced funding for county jails, inmate health care, infrastructure maintenance, while other funding limitations are affecting our county-run 911 system. Federal policies and programs developed with only the impact on the federal treasury in mind put the ability of local governments to fulfill our responsibilities at risk. Finally, our system of federalism requires a strong federal, state, and local partnership to achieve our shared goals. Unfortunately, our intergovernmental part partnership is often out of balance as federal agencies impose one-size-fits-all approaches, taking away local decision-making. When the federal agencies do engage in meaningful consultation, they are better able to develop practical rules that accomplish our shared goals. Mr. Chairman, thank you again for the opportunity to discuss these issues and the major impact of federally imposed burdens on state and local governments. In short, we hope Congress will implement a consultation process across the federal government that includes working with state and local partners early and often. I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you.